Hey, this is Jesse Tula for BatchFrame.com and welcome to the first edition of Beyond Camera Basics. In this video, I'm going to be talking about focal length. Now I know you're probably thinking, a video about focal length? That just may be the most exciting thing I've heard all day. And you're right. Now I'll admit this may not be the most compelling thing for a whole lot of people, but if you're anything like me, you'll find this really interesting. There's actually a lot more to focal length than you might think. Now, to keep this from being an hour-long lecture, I'm going to be going through things pretty quickly. So, if you're having any trouble keeping up, don't forget that this is a video, and you can pause, rewind, and replay anything at any time. I'll do my best to make things clear. Now, before we get into it, I need to clarify the type of lenses we'll be talking about. There are two broad categories of lenses, simple and complex. A simple lens is one that has a single lens element, like a magnifying glass. Complex lenses are those that contain multiple lens elements inside of a single housing. These are what you see in cinematography and still photography. When you find the focal length of a complex lens, it's the focal length for the entire lens group. The focal length of a simple lens is not found the same way as a complex lens. It's important to know this because there are many sources on the web that get the definitions confused, and you'll often see the simple lens definition given for complex lenses. In this video, I'm always talking about complex lenses and how they affect cinematography and still photography. All right, so let's get started. What is focal length? I'm sure you've got some idea of what it is, or at least I've heard it mentioned. Focal lengths are referred to in terms of millimeters, for instance, a 50 millimeter lens. But what does that 50 millimeters refer to? Well, there are sort of two answers. One is the technical answer, which says what the 50 millimeters is a measurement of. The other is the more artistic side, as far as the effect that a 50 millimeter lens has on the image. Now, indirectly, the focal length of a lens refers to its ability to converge to light, its magnification factor. But we'll come back to this after we get some of the technical mumbo jumbo out of the way. So, that 50 millimeter lens, what is that 50 millimeters a measurement of? Well, it isn't the physical length of the lens as many people think. In fact, the physical length of a lens has almost nothing to do with its focal length. But if it's not the physical length, then what is it? All right, here's your definition. Focal length of a photographic lens is a measurement of the distance from the secondary principal plane to the secondary focal point. All right, so I hope you learned something. Uh, that's it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna be... Actually, we have a lot more to talk about. Let's get back on track. So, what is the principal plane and focal point? Well, let's start with the focal point because it's a little bit easier to understand. As I mentioned earlier, lenses converge light. Light that enters the lens is converged to a point. The thing is, light is coming into the lens at a variety of angles, infinite angles, in fact. And all of this different light converges at different points but only one of these points is the focal point. The focal point is where rays of light that are parallel to each other, as well as to the optical axis, converge when the lens is set to infinity. Parallel rays of light only happen when the light source is extremely far away. This is why the lens must be set to infinity, because parallel rays of light are created from light that is, as far as the lens is concerned, infinitely far away. This type of light is created from things like the sun or stars, and can also be created artificially from something called a collimator. Now, you may remember from the definition of focal length that I specified the secondary focal point. This is because each lens actually has two, one on either side. However, since in photography, the light's always traveling the same direction through the lens, the front, or primary focal point, can be ignored. Okay, so next we have the principal planes, which are a little bit more difficult to understand. The reason for this is that they're not physical planes, and they can't be precisely found without already knowing the focal length. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Now, like focal points, there's also two principal planes. The principal planes are virtual planes at which all refraction occurs. What this means is that light that enters the front principal plane is seen exiting the rear principal plane from the corresponding point, only with a new direction. What makes the principal planes really strange is that they can occur outside of the physical lens, and they can even occur out of order meaning that the secondary principal plane can be further forward than the primary principal plane. The reason for this is that they're virtual planes, and unfortunately, like I said, they can't be precisely found without already knowing the focal length. But wait, if you have to know the focal length to find the principal plane, then how do you use the distance from the principal plane to the focal point to find the focal length? Well, for the answer to this, I emailed Zeiss, which is a company that makes lenses. They told me that although this is what focal length refers to, it's not how it's measured since principal planes are, as they said, not something that can be seen or touched. According to them, the focal length of a lens is measured by taking the quotient of the distance of an image point from the optical axis and the tangent of the field angle. 
Now, it took me a little while to figure out what that meant, but basically, what they do is they take a lens and they put it onto something called an optical bench. The lens looks into a collimator, which, if you remember from earlier, is a device that creates parallel rays of light, and it sees a slit of light at an infinite distance. The lens is then rotated to different angles, causing the slit of light to be seen at different distances from the center. They use these distances and angles to calculate the focal length. But okay, now that we know about the focal point and the principal plane, you should have a decent understanding of what the focal length is measuring. Before we move on to the artistic side, I want to go over a few misconceptions that you might come across. While doing research for this video, I ran across a ton of different sites explaining focal length, and most of them ended up being wrong. For example, I often see people use the term nodal point in place of principal plane. Now, like focal points and principal planes, there are also two nodal points, and almost all the time, the secondary nodal point and the secondary principal plane are in the exact same place. However, there are cases in which the nodal points move because of changes in refractive index on either side of the lens. In these cases, the nodal points may not line up with the principal planes, so using the term nodal point is not technically correct. Another common mistake I see is that focal length is the distance from the physical center of the lens to the focal point. Now, if we're talking about a simple lens, which is just a single lens element, this could be correct. However, it does not apply when we're talking about complex lenses. Now, probably the most common definition I see was that the focal length is the distance from the optical center of the lens to the focal point. Well, optical center is an interesting term because it's often used in place of many different words. For example, I've seen it in place of nodal point, in place of optical axis, physical center of the lens, and more. Optical center is actually the point at which rays of light will enter and leave with the same direction. Light rays that cross the optical center are those that were aimed at the primary nodal point and will exit as if they came from the secondary nodal point. But optical center does not refer to the principal planes, so using that term would be incorrect. In place of focal point, you may have seen focal plane or film plane used. Focal plane works because it's the plane perpendicular to the optical axis that intersects at the focal point, so the distances from the principal plane are the same. The film plane could also be used. It's the plane where the film is, or in digital, where the sensor is. If everything's set up right, the film plane, the focal plane, and the focal point are all in the exact same spot. Personally, I don't like to use the term film plane because it refers to a point on the camera and not the lens itself, and a 50mm lens is still a 50mm lens even when it's not on the camera. Okay, so now onto the more artistic side of things. What do these different focal lengths do to the image that you see? If you remember at the beginning of this video, I said that focal length refers to a lens's ability to converge light. A lens that can converge light strongly is able to bend more light into a certain area. This would be a wide lens, which has a greater angle of view, meaning that it can see more. You often get distortion with lenses that are very wide, and lenses that are super wide are called fisheye lenses. Long lenses are just the opposite. They have a narrower angle of view, and the image appears more magnified. You often hear the term telephoto lens rather than long lens, however this is not always correct. A telephoto lens is one whose focal length is longer than the physical length of the lens. Last, we have medium lenses, which can also be called normal or standard lenses. These are lenses between long and wide that come close to mimicking the view of a human eye. So what other effects do these lenses have? Well, wide lenses extend space. You can make a small room look large or make distances seem greater. Long lenses condense space. A person standing 20 feet in front of a wall could appear to be right next to it if you shoot them with a long lens. Another thing that focal length has a large effect on is depth of field. Now, I'm not going to go into depth here because depth of field will be covered in its own video, but just to give you an idea, wide lenses have greater depth of field, so more is in focus, while long lenses have a shallower depth of field, so much less is in focus. Now, one thing you should notice is that while talking about wide, normal, and long lenses, I didn't give any examples of focal length. This is because a lens is considered long or wide depending on the format being shot. Take a 25mm lens, for example. Put it onto a 1 3rd inch chip camera, and it's going to be a pretty long lens. But put that same 25mm lens onto a Super 35 camera, and it would fall into the normal to wide category. Different formats are different sizes and create different angles of view that affect the perceived magnification of the lens. To call a lens long or wide for a certain format, you first have to know what the normal lens is. In cinematography, a normal lens is defined as being one whose focal length is twice the diagonal measurement of the format being shot. So Super 35, the diagonal distance of the film gate is about 27 millimeters. So a normal lens would be a 54 millimeter, or more often rounded to a 50 millimeter. For a 1/3 inch camera, a normal lens would be closer to a 12 mil. 
Anything longer than normal would be a long lens, and anything wider would be a wide lens. It changes with the format. Alright, so I think that's enough about focal length for one day, but if you have any questions that weren't answered in the video, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to clear things up for you. Also, I'll put a list of my references together so you can do some more research on your own if you want. But that's it for the first Beyond Camera Basics video. I hope that it helped clear some things up for you and kept you interested. My name is Jesse Tool for BatchFrame.com and I will see you in the next one.